Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlax here. I got another Master Duel video for you. So today we're going to be talking about Rescue Ace once again, uh, but this is going to be Snake Eye Rescue Ace. Uh, last time we covered the deck, I showed off a very minimal uh, Diabell Star slash Original Sin uh, engine in the deck, only consisting of three Diabell Star, three Wanted, and then one copy of Original Sin. This aim or this build uh, of the deck definitely aims to make more use of the Snake Eye cards, uh, particularly. Particularly Snake Eye Ash. As you can see, we do have a playset of that here. Uh, basically, the idea of this deck is that it plays most of the same as the typical Rescue Ace deck, but it does have the option of going into a combo line with only the one of Snake Eye Ash. Uh, the idea here is pretty similar to a pure Snake Eye deck, if you're familiar with that one card combo line, then you'll probably pick up on this deck pretty quickly, right? We're normal swimming Snake Eye Ash, we're adding our Poplar, we're going to Special Poplar off its own effect and then add the Original Sin. Uh, then we can link off the Poplar for Link Karibo, uh, of course putting Poplar in the Spell Trap Zone. From there we use Original Sin to send the Poplar that's in the Spell Trap Zone uh, in order to Special Summon the Rescue Ace Hydrant from the deck. Uh, now, here's the cool thing, too, is if you opened with Diabelle and you sent literally any Rescue Ace card, then you can use Hydrant to add Turbulence and set up your whole Rescue Ace setup in addition to your Snake Eye plays. But even if you didn't open any other Rescue Ace card to get into the graveyard, you could still use Hydrant at this point to add Impulse for follow-up plays. Um, and then from there, you just kind of use the Snake Eye Ash effect with the Link Rebo that's already in your field. So your field at that point would be Snake Eye Ash, Hydrant, and Link Rebo, right? Link Rebo and Snake Eye Ash get sent off of Snake Eye Ash F for the Flamberge. Flamberge and Hydrant link into IP. And then from there, you do the same line into Promethean Princess, bring back the Flamberge, and then go into Ambler Whale. Um, but again, this setup not only adds you the impulse, but if you already sent another Rescue Ace card off of the um, Wanted, or not the Wanted, the Diabell Star, uh, then you can add the Hydrant, so, or the Turbulent, Turbulence off the Hydrant, bleh, <laughs> and then Special it, and then Set 4, and you're at an even better board state from there. Normally, I would just show the combo line, but it's really not too different from the regular uh, Snake Eye line. Uh, plus, you'll get the gist of it once you see uh, the games we got coming up here anyway. So, I do think this does add a lot to the uh, Rescue Ace build without having to add too much to the main deck, right? Like, if you look, really, the only things we're adding here that weren't present before are, you know, the Snake Guy Ashes and the Poplar and the additional copy of Original Sin, and that's pretty much it. Uh Snake Eye, or not Snake Eye, Rescue Ace rather, uh, already didn't really make too much use of their extra deck beforehand, so you get to use just a bunch of Snake Eye cards here. Here, I decided to try a bunch of stuff that I don't normally play uh, in regular Snake Eye, just to see how I like it. Although, granted, I will say, I think by trying all of this stuff at once, I did kind of uh, uh, miss out on some stuff. I, I also wanted, like, access code and that kind of thing, but... I decided to try Lyralusk and Zeus, I decided to try Relinquish Shanima, I decided to give Heat Soul another shot. Not a lot of it came up, um, but I do still think there was merit to testing it out for sure. Uh, either way, we're not playing Jet Synchron, so you don't do Formula, Synchron, uh, and bore load here um we can still however make the baron de fleur off of like the ash blossom plus the bell star if nothing else so uh, we do still have that option again there i think overall i mean rescue ace is obviously going to be a lot better once it gets its follow-up support but it's also going to be really interesting because it'll really depend on when that support comes out of this right uh, now that we have Snake Eye in the game, um, you know, we're, we're already kind of skipping over this period of time in the TCG and OCG where Rescue Ace was at its prime, uh, when it had Preventer and the Spell Card Emergency, um, but again, before the Snake Eye stuff came out. Now, of course, Rescue Ace will still be a lot better once that stuff comes out, that follow-up support, uh, and indeed, the Snake Eye package will still be able to support it then, if you so choose. In fact, it'll probably still be the optimal way to play it. Uh, I don't know that enough about Rescue Ace at that point in time with all of support to say that for certain uh, however we are seeing a point where rescue ace there's a chance it might not ever be a tier one deck in master duel if snake eye and like especially if fire king stuff comes out like at around the same time or even before at this rate we don't even know it could have even still come out before the the follow-up rescue ace support uh and in that case i think the the window of opportunity for rescue ace to be the best deck in the meta might have passed it might have already passed honestly uh who knows but um it's kind of interesting the way that master duels release schedule is kind of like changing the meta and i mean to be fair i do think it is cool that master duel is a bit of its own metagame uh and diverging at least somewhat from the tcg and ocg 
Um, but at the same time, you know, that could mean that decks like Rescue Ace might not get certain opportunities that they did have in the TCG or OCG. But again, that said, I don't think Rescue Ace is in a bad spot. Any deck that has a level 1 fire monster is in a good spot in this meta, and Rescue Ace has literally centered their whole archetype around a level 1 fire monster. So, uh, needless to say, they definitely like the addition of original Sinful Spoils to the game. Um, but I do think they still would like Preventer and Emergency even more. So, I guess on that note, uh, things I would change about this build moving forward, like I said in the extra deck, I'd probably make this more of like a standard pure Snake Eyes extra deck. Like I said, uh, a lot of this stuff is kind of like, eh, I just tried it out just to try it out. I will say Underworld Goddess, I'm probably going to try to work it to my pure Snake Eyes extra deck. I think it's really, really good. Um, and again, this, some of this stuff did occasionally come up. We'll see a game where some of these uh, extra deck cards did end up mattering a little bit. But overall, I think I would have changed the extra deck to just be a little bit more... Um, that's the word I'm looking for. Just a little bit more uh, streamlined and not just me trying a bunch of random things. But as far as the main deck goes, I like it. I especially like playing 42 cards, right? Uh, because this is a deck where we have cards we're not trying to draw. Uh, namely, the Rescue Ace Spell and Trap cards. Ideally, we do not open any of these. So, uh, I think, you know, the other decks we were playing 42 cards, right? Those were the adventure builds. And... Um, in that case, we had like Toxon Borg and Fateful Adventure and the Equip Spell that we weren't trying to draw. Basically, I'm willing to go over 40 if I have cards in my deck that are necessary for my plays, but I'm not actively trying to draw Garnets, as we call them in the business, so to speak. The business. Uh, anyway, but yeah, no, I, I definitely think that uh, going a little bit over 40 for a deck like this is correct. Um, I might change my Disrupt lineup a little bit, like maybe not just jam three Imperms and maybe play like a Nibiru instead of one of the Imperms or uh, something like that I think would definitely be helpful in the future, but um, yeah, I think overall I'm pretty satisfied with this build. So let's break this build down card by card and then we're going to see some gameplay. We are on three Rescue Ace Hydrant, three Snake Eye Ash, one Snake Eyes Poplar, three Maxi, three Ash Blossom, and a Joy Spring, two Rescue Ace Impulse, two Rescue Ace Airlifter, one Rescue Ace Fire Attacker, one Rescue Ace Fire Engine, three Diabell Star the Black Witch, one Snake Eyes Flamberg Dragon, two Rescue Ace Turbulence, one one for one, two original sinful spoils, snake eye, one rescue ace HQ, two called by the grave, one cross out designator, one rescue, one alert, three wanted seeker of sinful spoils, three infinite impermanence, one contain, one extinguish. And that's going to do it for our main deck. For the extra deck, we are on one Baron de Fleur, one Leoleska Symbol Nightingale, one Divine Arsenal, Ah, Zeus, Sky Thunder. One Link Kriba, one Relinquished Anima, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf, one Hita, the Fire Charmer Ablaze, one IP Masquerina, one Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy, one Deco Talker Heat Soul, one Promethean Princess, Bestower of Flames, one Amphibious Stormship Amble Whale, one Appalooza Bow of the Goddess, and then finally one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. That's gonna do it for our list, let's go ahead and see some games. Okay, so our first opponent's gonna be on Snake Eye. Not quite a mirror match here on pure Snake Eye, and we are, of course, and this is, I don't know, it's interesting because it's definitely, of course, more of a Rescue Ace deck, but it does still, again, do that pure Snake Eye line, which is kind of neat. So, not getting to open much in the way of disruption here. Um, our opponent's not really going to open too much either, though. They're just going to end up setting a couple of cards and then passing. So, going to draw the Wanted and throw that out during the draw phase. Opponent is going to draw phase Max C. So, immediately at this point, I have a decision to make, right? Of how much I want to play into this maxi on the opponent's turn. Normally, if I have the opportunity to attack, so turn two or later, I'm more willing to play into a maxi. But I also know that Nib is becoming more and more popular in this meta, meaning it's becoming more and more likely for my opponent to have it. Furthermore, and this is going to actually be my main decision point here, by setting two cards and not doing anything else on turn one, my opponent has demonstrated to me that they don't have that great of a hand. So, I don't want to give them any more draws and make their hand any better. I want to force them to top deck into a, a plays off of the one card in their hand, right? So, I'm going to use the Wanted to get the Diabell Star, of course. Stand by main. Uh, get a normal summon the Poplar. Also, I will say, might not have been the best time maxi for my opponent. If they did need draws, you really should wait until you can guarantee get the draw, if at all possible. Um, but also doing it that early during the draw phase against the Wanted, it just gives me a lot more information about the turn moving forward. 
So I'm going to normal summon the pop where our opponent will activate the effect failure. Uh, this is 100% fine. I was not planning on using original sin anyway. I could even access the original sin off of DML Star, who again, I'm not planning on special summoning anyway. So I do not care at all if this pop where gets negated. A-OK -okay with me. Uh, really, the main purpose of summoning Poplar is what I'm about to do here anyway, uh, which is activate the field spell, Risk Race HQ, and then tribute Poplar for a fire attacker. This will let me put Poplar in the spell trap zone for a future turn, uh, but also it'll let me battle in for a decent little bit of damage with fire attacker. Also, if my opponent goes to add off that extra, I can draw two, discard one, to potentially get some disruption for their turn. So sure enough, my opponent is going to draw phase wanted for a royal, very nice, royal Dia Bellstar here. Also, of course, the other reason to summon fire attacker is extinguish. Uh, this is the trap card that will let me destroy a card on my opponent's field, a monster uh, in particular. So you can already kind of see how things are coming together here. Uh, obviously, my opponent top decked the wanted, otherwise they would have played it already uh, to add the Dia Bellstar. And I already know they're going to go for the Dia Bellstar set the original sin. But what I can do here is, well, of course, I'm going to try to draw two and then discard one of the fire attack. Our opponent is going to use an Imperm. This is fine with me because I already know I can stop my opponent's whole turn with what I have already. I don't need these draws in order to do plays. So this is just getting an Imperm out of the way for my follow-up turn where I will go for game, right? So again, 100% fine with this Imperm. Does not matter even the slightest. Also, they negate my Poplar in the column. That's kind of cute. Doesn't do anything, of course, but they're going to pitch Oak and then special summon the Dia Bellstar. Dia Bellstar F will set the original sin. Now, I, of course, have my toggle flipped on on, and you, I guess you don't have to wait until the resolution of the chain link. Uh, you could do it when Dia Bellstar activates her effect, but either way, before they have a chance to activate original sin, we're going to want to use Extinguish Destroy Dia Bellstar. Now my opponent doesn't have a face-up card to sack off the original sin, unless the off chance this is a continuous spell or trap card, but the odds of that are extremely slim. Um, again, my opponents already told me that nothing else they had was relevant to plays, because they set this on turn one, and this card hasn't been used to disrupt me or advance their game state. So I'm guessing this is a more situational card that just hasn't come up yet, right? And sure enough, that is going to ultimately end their turn. Now I only have one unknown card to deal with, period. I know this is Original Sin and won't do anything against me. I top deck Original Sin, which I didn't even really need to because I already have the Abel Star, but this is still very nice. I'm going to use the top deck to Original Sin, sack off the Poplar in the Spell Trap Zone. Special Snake Eye Ash activates effect as well as the Poplar effect in my graveyard. Sure enough, it does end up being a bit of a situational response card. Called by the Grave is going to be my opponent's last card here. Uh, now I know this card is Original Sin, so I don't have anything to fear. I know that they have no plays at all, and I can definitely find lethal very easily on this turn. Gonna use Rescue Ace HQ to summon that Hydrant I just added. We'll use Hydrant to add the Turbulence. Uh, I get to sack off my Field Spell for the Dia Bellstar here. Dia Bellstar gets to set a Wanted, just cause, I don't know. For the follow-up turn, that's not gonna come anyway. <laughs> right, like, uh, anyway. Gonna go for the Link Rebo here, just to like work it into the line, I guess, and then Link off the Fire Attacker in particular here for the Nightmare Phoenix again. I was just kind of styling at this point, I guess, I don't know. Just gonna blow away their last back row. Uh, Snake Eye Ash, I'll send it with the Nightmare Phoenix to summon up the Flamberg Dragon, and then I can just summon the Turbulence, and that's definitely lethal. I mean, this is also like, I wasn't paying attention to their life points, I actually forgot I got in damage with Fire Attacker, and I thought they already had, or they still had, rather, 8k life points, so... That's why I went to the trouble of summoning all the stuff I did here, but... Just need the Flamberge and the Turbulence. Although it does feel nice to finish off my opponent with the respective boss monsters of the two archetypes that make up my deck here. So, um, yeah, I, th I think the, the kind of moral of that game is that, like, there's a lot of people who might have just, like, gone for it under the maxi anyway. And I don't think that was, like, the worst idea in the world, but just, like... Paying attention to what your opponent has done and what they have and haven't used definitely matters in terms of, like, assessing just how much they can actually threaten you. And if they can't threaten you very much, then it's definitely better to make safer plays, uh, even if it prolongs the game, just to ensure that you do end up winning it, right? Because I could have pushed for a turn, uh, or for uh, uh, lethal, rather, under the turn that I got max seed. But by just waiting out one more turn, uh, we were able to ensure that we had lethal and not have to, like, randomly get nibbed or something. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at our next duel here. Okay, our next game is going to be at Stun, beginning of the season. Uh, you know, you're always going to see Stun at Diamond 5, Master 5, the lower ranks uh, of each individual, uh, you know, rank. Just because, like, 
not, I'm, stun's not that good of a deck. <laughs> right, but anyway, opponent's going to go first. Again here, actually, this is another going second game. They're going to summon a barrier statue, set a card, and then pass. I could use Imperm on the barrier statue, but I don't really have plays anyway, even if I do, with like Hydra and nothing else. So I'm just going to summon Impulse, battle, it battle over it, set two, and then pass. I'm going to set Call By, and then Imperm, of course, across from my opponent's back row. We're going to activate a Nadir Servant here to grab the uh, Dogmatica Ecclesia here, sending the Elder Entity Entest. Now, who's going to activate Elder Entity Entest? And they actually thought for a second here about what to pop, and I was kind of thinking about what I was going to do, depending on what they would select here. Um, I think, though, pretty much no matter what I'm activating called by, the only situation... See, here's the thing, though. They just added the Ecclesia, and I definitely want the Imperm against that, and also the back row, so it's like, I think, yeah... Even if they go to target, like, my, I guess if they go to target call, but I don't have to chain it, but there's also, like, no reason not to, so. Yeah, I think no matter what, I just activate call by here. Well, and also, I was going to say I could tribute Impulse, but... Yeah, my, obviously, the Entis wasn't on the field, so Impulse didn't have a chance to activate. Uh, I can activate in response to the Ecclesia, though, which is, of course, on the field. Uh, and then I can also use Imperm. I did decide to use Imperm here. This was actually probably my biggest decision point of this game. Um, I had to make a decision here, right, as to whether or not I wanted to use the Impulse now to stop the Ecclesia search for Dogmatica Punishment, or hold it for the next turn to use against this back row. Uh, ultimately, I am going to use the Imperm against the Dogmatica Ecclesia here, because again, um, by summoning a barrier statue, like, I already know I'm against stun, like, not an actual Dogmatica deck. So I know this is just going to end up adding the Dogmatica Punishment. My opponent's back row has been sitting here. I don't know what it is, but it hasn't done anything. It didn't do anything, at least when I normal summon Impulse and battled over their barrier statue. So you would think if it was the kind of card that was like a Mirror Force or a kind of card that can, like, negate a summon or something, they probably would have used it to protect their barrier statue. Basically, what I'm saying here is I think the Dogmatica Punishment is going to be more threatening than whatever this is. So, I'll use Impulse, or I'll use the uh, Imperm, rather, now. Also, using Impulse to Special Summon the Turbulence from our deck. Yep, Ecclesia is negated. Opponent's just going to pass right back over to us. Uh, from here, it should be fairly simple, I think, to find... Uh, if not lethal, just, you know, a good amount of plays here. Definitely going to start by using Turbulence's effect, and Opponent does not have anything to stop it, so... If nothing else, we do get these four back rows. Going to normal summon the Hydrant and use Hydrant to add another Turbulence. Uh, and funnily enough here, my opponent actually played in the Anima Zone. And not only did they play in the Anima Zone, it actually just 100% matters. Uh, I could have used one of my back rows, by the way, while I saw the Hydrant on the field. I ultimately decided not to. I just figured I wouldn't need it. I didn't want to commit to, like, activating one of them if I might need another one later, right? Or if I might need, might need it later, but... Now that I have two rescue Ace monsters in the yard, I can just summon the other turbulence that I added, and look at this, I even get to go for exactly though here, because again, my opponent played in the anima column. We love to see that. It's been a long time since I've attacked for lethal with relinquished anima, and I was very happy to do so here. Especially against stun. We love to see games against stun that go this well. Um, but again, like I've been having a lot of games against stun that have gone well lately because stun is just not anything near what it used to be, honestly. Um, like even when they go first, a lot of the time, it's like if they don't get lucky and draw their one of floodgates, it's usually you're just like playing through like what a dogmatica punishment and I don't know, maybe a barrier statue, which is like not that big of a deal. So all right, let's take a look at the next duel here. All right, this game's gonna be against Mikanko, so we're not gonna be going second here. But when I lost the coin flip and my opponent let me go first, I kind of had an inkling of what was uh, what was probably gonna be going on in this matchup here. So technically, still every game is are ones where we've lost the coin flip, for what it's worth. <laughs> uh, this will be a bit more indicative of what an average turn one's gonna look like, right? I'm gonna start by normal summoning the Snake Eye Ash and then uh, activating the Poplar. Or adding and then activating the Poplar to special. Normally I would get to add an original sin, but I unluckily opened both copies, so um, kind of missing out on, on an add here a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. I get to use the original sin, send the Poplar to summon the Hydrant. Now normally I would use Hydrant to add Impulse, but I already have an Impulse in my hand here, so I'm just going to add a Turbulence for like follow-up plays anyway. I'm going to summon the Flamberge Dragon and then link it off with the Hydra. This is the line I was describing during the deck profile. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I didn't really bother showing it uh, in its own separate combo guide. Although, to be fair, I probably should have shown this as the first game. I usually like to do that, but... So yeah, I mean, from here, just pretty typical Snake Eye stuff, right? We're going to make the Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess will bring back the Flamberge Dragon. 
Uh, Flamebridge Dragon is then going to activate its effect to place the IP into the spell trap zone. Uh, and then we can link off the Stink Eye Ash and Flamebridge Dragon into the Amble Whale. And again, if you had started with, like, like here actually, if I had started with Wanted or DML Star instead of the second original sin, I could have sent the Impulse and then summoned this Turbulence that, that I added off of Hydrant. And then in addition to this, you know, board state, this Snake Eye stuff, I also would have had Turbulence and then the four back rows. That would have been actually super good here, but I'll have to settle for just setting Call by and passing. Again, if nothing else, we do have the Impulse in hand as well. Uh, draw phase, during the opponent's draw phase, I'm definitely going to summon out the IP with the Flambird here. Uh, opponent's going to lead with Ultimate Slayer! I've never been hit with this card before. I think maybe one other time when it very first came out, but yeah. Sending the Ferragi in order to add and then draw. Now, I didn't know if they were going to be on Tri-Brigade, so I saved the call by here, thinking, oh, they might pitch Fractal, but nah. Uh, they're just using the Ferragite only for the draw here. They're going to bounce my Flamberge. I'm going to use the Impulse here. And I'm going to use Impulse to go for Fire Attacker for multiple reasons. One, my opponent just added a card, so I get to draw two and discard one. But two, uh, I get to discard one, which means I get to discard the Flamberge they bounce and then activate the Flamberge's effect to bring back Ash and Hydrant. I didn't bring back Poplar here because there's no original sin to add, so there's kind of no point. Although, I guess there was the point of getting into the Spell Trap Zone later in the turn. Now, Axe of Fools here, you might be wondering, wait a second, your Swarm Ship was at 3200, then Axe of Whales equipped to it, but now it's only at 3600, why isn't it at 4200? Uh, well, the reason for that is because Axe of Fools actually negates the monster effect of uh, whatever it equips to. So, it negated the Amble Whales effect to boost itself, right? Setting it back down to 2600, and then gave it a 1000 boost up to 3600. If you're confused as to why uh, this wasn't at 4200. Uh, also, I guess my opponent forgot to equip a card to this monster, <laughs> so uh, they don't take damage, but they're going to lose their monster, and I don't take damage. I, well, I will only take the 3600 from the Huli here. I decided to Ash Blossom this Great Makako Ceremony effect, because, like, I don't know, they hadn't done anything else that was worth ashing, and I figured I'd do it, just get it off now, right? They're going to set one card and then pass back over to me, so... After some deliberation on how to proceed, I decided one of the best things to do, well, after activating Wanted here, uh, they're going to get to use the McConkle. Oh, that's right! They use the McConkle rivalry here to set up Angelica's Angelic Ring to negate my Wanted, which I thought was a little weird because I feel like you got to figure if I have this board state, like, I definitely I don't need this Wanted to resolve. So they could have actually done that, but later, when I activated a different, better spell card to negate, but... Anyway, I'm going to use the Hydrant for Airlifter, and yeah, after some deliberation, I was just like, yeah, fuck it, I'll just go for Goddess. Goddess clears their whole board by making it here, so like, why not? Mostly the Huli not letting any of their stuff be targeted, it was just like, I don't want to have to deal with it, you know? Simpler to just get rid of the whole board, plus I can still pretty easily find lethal here. I can normal summon the airlifter, add the HQ, HQ to summon another hydrant, then I can special the turbulence that I added, and then use the original sin in my hand to send the hydrant. I could have also sent the field spell, which probably would have been a little bit better, but not that big of a deal either way. Uh, and then now this is 8,500 damage, so we go boom, boom, boom. And finish him off with Stink Eye Ash, giving it that rank number 9 to finish your ranking. Which I think is really funny, uh, that a level 1 monster with 800 attack is the one that's f ending duels by attacking directly, um, you know, more often than most other cards of the game. <laughs> but it makes sense, of course, given the, uh, the deck and the meta and all that stuff. Alright, we do have one more game to show off. Let us take a look at that. Okay, our final opponent is going to be on Fluanderies. And I think I actually lost this coin flip. I actually had another I had another video where I lost every coin flip. I would say go went second every game, but, you know, losing the coin flip to Makako, yeah, yeah. We already went over that. Uh, his hand's not really looking that great, especially against Fluanderies. But thankfully our opponent's hand isn't really that great either. They have to start with Eaglin, which means they're not going to get the full combo out here. Eaglin set one and then pass. Woof. That is pretty brutal. So uh, we get to add or draw the airlifter here. I'm going to set, of course, Max C, knowing up against Flu. Send that for the DML Star. DML Star F2 set the original sin. I'm then going to normal summon airlifter. Airlifter will add the Rescue Ace HQ. Uh, because I already have Hydrant in hand, I can just use the Rescue Ace HQ to normal summon it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just add Fire Attacker here because I already have Turbulence in hand. I get to link off the airlifter and the Hydrant here for the Nightmare Phoenix. 
uh, get to check the opponent's back row in this way. Just according to Flamberge, because it's not going to attribute summon for it. And I did actually manage to get rid of a Imperum here, so that was definitely relevant and good. Good news, the original send a special Snake Eye Ash and then add the Poplar. This was a game where I was like, oh, I should probably have access code, but I'll, I'll find Lethal anyway. I still have a Turbulence I haven't summoned yet. Although I'm going for it here, I think, yeah. Turbulence and then... Oh wow, I forgot they conceded that early. I thought, I, for some reason I remembered in this duel, I thought I had to like climb a little bit and figure out how to lethal without access code. Which, I'm thinking about it now, I would have needed at least 5,000 more damage between... I don't know if I could have found it actually. This is why I was saying earlier that I think it's important that I had the uh, the access code talker. But I omitted it because I was trying a bunch of like random stuff in this extra deck and, and it almost cost me this game. My opponent just assumed I had it and then just conceded anyway. So, um, but I don't know. I don't know if I actually would have been able to find lethal here. I mean, I could have ended on like Apo, Turbulence, and then the set four, right? But like, that's not a guaranteed game. Uh, that's why you should, especially if you're at like Diamond 5, like I was when I played these games and my opponent was too. It's like, um... Just, like, make him play it out, you know? It's like, yeah, you can concede quickly, but um, you also don't have anything to lose. I mean, I guess to be fair, even if you weren't at the the rank floor, like, you know, Diamond Master 5 or whatever rank 5, you still have nothing to lose if you're about to concede, uh, except for time, I suppose. But, you know, we're already wasting our time by playing Yu-Gi-Oh! anyway, right? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think so. I, I love this game, honestly, so... Uh, yeah, I think that's going to go ahead and do it for these duels. Thank you all very much for watching these. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and move now to our outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. That means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description. One of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch vods as well as some additional uh, non Yu-Gi-Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.